saddle discomfort, hand symptoms, neck and upper back discomfort, and just plain being uncomfortable on your bike. These are all really common bike fit complaints. Figuring out what's going to correct these problems is often very difficult and a complex process. For instance, a cleat issue can have effects on somebody's hand position, hand placement, can then in turn affect how we sit on the saddle. Basically, small changes in one area can have dramatic effects further away. There is a simple test though that can give us some good clues as to what's going wrong and what we need to correct. Now, like any simple test being applied to a very complex process, it has its limitations. This test is best done when the existing bike fit is pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can help you out if you have numb hands or if your saddle is uncomfortable. But if you have hand numbness, saddle discomfort, low back pain, and neck pain to boot, effectiveness of this test is going to wane. This test is especially good at making the negative effects of a certain bike position very real to the rider. First, the bike should be set up on the trainer. Make sure that it's level. You can measure from the ground to the center of the axle or the quick release and the height of these two should be obviously the same. On the bike, the rider should pedal at a moderate resistance and at the upper end of their comfortable range in cadence. Pedaling at this rate should be still very comfortable, so if you're above that, it may skew the results. Likewise, if your cadence is very slow and you're pushing a bigger gear, you won't get an accurate assessment. I prefer this test to be done well below threshold in order to get the best results. So continuing to pedal at this cadence, the rider should then slowly and at the same time raise both hands off the handlebars and slowly sit up. It's important to not push off the handlebars or to use momentum in order to do this. What constitutes a positive test? First, that your cadence increases noticeably when you lift your hands off the bars. The reason being is in order to keep your torso from falling forward, your body will try and counterbalance this by applying more force to the pedals. Secondly, you have to significantly tighten your abdominal muscles when you lift your hands up. Again, in order to counterbalance the torso, the abdominals tightening down anchor the torso, the ribs, to the pelvis uh, and prevent it from pitching forward. Number three, and this is the most common, is that you slide forward on the saddle. If they don't notice their initial shift forward, they will notice that when they put their hands back on the handlebars, they have to shift their hips back in order to get on their in their regular position on the seat. And the fourth positive sign is that the hips will roll forward on the saddle. This often goes in hand in hand with the hips sliding forward. And sometimes you can see this when viewing the rider from the side as it looks like their low back arches just slightly as they lift their hands up. So what can this test tell us? If you're having saddle problems, a positive test will tell you that your reach is too long or your handlebars are too low, your saddle is too high, or your saddle is tilted nose down too much. If you have hand or upper body problems on the bike, a positive test might tell you that your reach is too long or your handlebars are again too low, causing you to put more weight on your hands, or your saddle is tilted too much nose down, putting more pressure on your hands. Now there are some aggravating or complicating factors to this test. First of all, if your abdominals are especially weak, poor trunk control will make even small imbalances between the seat and the handlebars very significant. Poor cleat placement will decrease the amount of weight we're bearing through our feet, which will then again accentuate any of the difficulties we're having with the saddle or the handlebars. So this test is very useful in a narrow range of circumstances, but fortunately, this narrow range is where many cyclists have problems. So if you're having any of these problems on the bike, give this test a run and see what you can figure out. And let me know how you get on. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching everyone. That's all for now. See you next time.